Okay, so how is everyone today? Good. Wet. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so last time uh, we were talking about how to perform division without division. So today's what, the 28th? Yeah. <clears throat> so specifically what we did last time is we discussed what Newton's method was and we used, we used Newton's method to derive the Babylonian method to compute square roots. We did that. And then we used Newton's method to derive uh, the Newton-Raphson uh, sequence for division. Okay, so, does anyone remember what it is? Because <laughs> I can't remember it, I derive it every time. X equals what? C 2 minus C B. Where, so where this one is the new, this one is the, this one is the new guess. Uh, C is the old guess, right? Or the current guess. And B is what we're trying to reciprocate. So you're trying to compute one over B. Okay. So, with such, a, with such a method, an iterative method, uh, you, have to know, you have to know what to guess first. You have to know what your first guess is. Uh, for example, in the square root, what's the first guess that we always make for a square root? One. At least, that's, that's the way we wrote it down. A lot of machines do it that way, but some other machines uh, try to be slightly more clever. Uh, to make a, a better initial guess. But you can always guess one. However, uh, that, that's for square roots. When you want to compute reciprocals, uh, it's necessary for you to be significantly more clever. Because if you, if you don't guess right, uh, then this formula, this, up, this iterative update formula will just n not work at all. Okay. So, now we need a little bit of discussion about uh, how we're going to construct our initial guess and carry out uh, the procedure generally. So specifically, what we're going to do is this. So th that's the update formula from last time. So two, let's consider the plot of y equal uh, 1 over b. So if we plot it, and this is the y-axis and this the b-axis, then how does it look when you plot it? Yeah? Yeah. Hyperbola, right? Yeah, there we go. It's the standard reciprocal shape. So that's how it looks, more or less. Uh, well, the first observation I'd like to make is that uh, it consists of two disconnected pieces. Okay, so there's, the, there's the, the piece when the thing you're reciprocating is negative and the, the other piece when the thing that you're reciprocating is positive. So what we're going to do, for reasons that I'm not going to entirely get into, uh, is we're going to just focus on one particular piece of the reciprocal. So in particular, we're going to focus on the piece that is between half and one. So just this piece. 
right there. So we're going to take a good look at it. That's an eyeball. And we're going to look, we're going to look real close at that piece right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to re we're going to restrict ourselves to uh, half less or equal b less or equal uh, 1. We're going to restrict ourselves to this region. And if I redraw that carefully, then how high, how high is uh, this? That's 2, right? Because the reciprocal of half is 2. And how high is that one? One. So really, I drew it as a square, but if, if, I were to make the, if I were to make the scale the same, the horizontal and vertical scale the same, then this would be kind of a tall rectangle. So I'm, I'm going to draw it accurately now, more accurately. Uh, so this is at height uh, 1, and this is at height two, and this is at position half, horizontal position half, and this is at horizontal position one, and the plot goes from this corner to this corner, it goes from that corner to that corner, and it does so kind of in a bent way. Okay. So now, <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to make an initial guess. So suppose we want to reciprocate B. So suppose we want to reciprocate some b, which is in the interval, half to 1. What we want is to have a guess. We want a guess <clears throat> which is close. to the true answer. Okay, but we want to we want to come up with this guess using only add subtract multiply and divide, right? Because after all, we're figuring out how to divide, so we can't we can't use division <coughs> to to make our guess. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to imagine the following. Let's Let's figure out a, a line. So notably, this is bent. That's bent. It's not, it's not flat. So um, it's not a line. But what I'd like for you to imagine is that there is some line. There is some line that, you know, that would be kind of almost right. It would fit it kind of closely. Right? Not, not this line. That wouldn't be a very good fit. That wouldn't be a very good uh, approximation of the red, and uh, you know this line way down here wouldn't be a good approximation of the red. What I want you to imagine is that what if you could best fit a line onto that red? Okay, so the now the the concept of finding the best fitting line is a calculus concept, and strictly speaking, that's not a prerequisite for this course. So I just have to say that at this point, there's calculus magic involved to where you can come up with a line okay, that would, in, in, a, in a certain precise sense, best fit this red line. And if you were to do it, if you were to do that, it would, there we go. it would in some places be below the red and in other places be above the red. 
So it would look something like this. So something like something like that. Okay, so this blue line We will use the blue line uh, as our estimate. So through the magic of calculus, I will now quote, quote for you the equation of that line. So the equation for the line is 48 over 17 minus 32 over 17 B. So you might object and say, wait a minute. I, ho I hope you would object and say, wait a minute, we're defining division. We're defining division, and how can it possibly be acceptable for you to use coefficients that have division in them when we're defining division? Because surely that's not all right. Okay, then I can respond, well, for this specific case, I could by hand, I could by hand, calculate 48 over 17 to as many decimal places as is necessary and then we could we could just type type that in so we could say you know it would be what two point something 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 and then we could just truncate it okay and we could do a similar thing for 32 over 17 so we could do these two by hand because we're trying to teach the machine how to do it so so it wouldn't be too much to just do these two by hand Okay, so what I mean to say is that, for example, if you wanted to reciprocate, suppose we wanted to compute the reciprocal reciprocal of say 0 0.73. We wanted to compute 1 over 0 0.73. In the first place, is that one of the numbers that we're talking about? Yeah, because it's between half and one. It's between half and one. Then what, what would be our first guess? So our first guess would be Yeah, it's it's plug 0 0.73 into this into this line because that's what that's what we're saying is that we need a good first guess and we're going to use that line to construct our first guess. So, our first guess would be C equal to 48 over 17 minus 32 over 17 and then we'll plug in now 0 0.73 that would be our first guess. And notice that this expression doesn't only uses uh, add, subtract, and multiply because we're discounting these particular divisions be because those are, those are just special cases. Okay, so that only uses add, subtract, and multiply. Let's type it in. So 48 over 17 minus 32 over 17 times 0 0.73. Okay, so what we're saying <coughs> is that our first guess would be C equal to 1.449, 1 1.4494, 1.1765. Okay, now just as a check for, for reasonableness, let's see if that's even reasonable. Okay, let's, let's use a machine that already has a functioning division and let's let's actually compute 1 over 0 0.73 and see what it says. OK. 
okay? So that's what the machine says if you do 1 over 0 0.73. So 1.369 something, something, something. Okay, so then is that a reasonable guess? Yeah, I think it's, it's close-ish. Yeah. Could be worse. Yeah, it could be worse, right? Mm -hmm. so, so this is going to be our first guess. Now, how do we make a better guess? That would be another way, but then you'd have to calculate a new line. Then you'd have to calculate a new, new line. Rather, once you, once you have a guess, once you have any guess, and this, is, this I'm claiming is a, is a very good first guess, how do you get your next guess? Into this formula, right? And notice that this formula only uses add, subtract, multiply, and no divides. This one does. Okay, so next guess is from the formula x is c multiplied by 2 minus uh, cb, where b is uh, 0 0.73. So we could calculate our next guess as uh, what? As that number, so 1.4495. Four, one, one, seven, six, five, multiplied by two minus one point four four nine four, one one seven six five, and then that number multiplied by zero point seven three. And the important thing about this formula is that it uses no divisions. So now let's plug that in. 1.44941765 times 2 minus 1.44941765 times 0 0.73. Okay, so hopefully it's much closer to the true answer, but we'll see. So I typed it all in as faithfully as I could, and... Ah, wow, let's write that down. So now our next guess is 1.36524-3571. And then what was the true reciprocal again? 1.369 something or other. Wow, even, a, even after just updating the initial guess one time, we're already accurate to two places past the decimal. Okay, so let's do one more. So what we're saying is that now this is the current guess. So now we're construing that to be C, our current guess. So the next guess would be uh, X is that number, 1.36524-3571 multiplied by 2 minus 1.36524-3571 times 0 0.73. Okay, so if we type that in the machine, and notably, it has no divisions in it. 1.36524-3571 times 2 minus 1.36524-3571 times 0 0.73. Okay, so if we type that into the calculator, this thing, these lights are shining right at it. Okay. Wow. Okay. So I so let's write that down. So that's one point three six nine eight four seven four three six. Okay. And just one more time, let's display what was the real 
What was the real reciprocal? Okay, so now can you see we're accurate to <coughs> four places? Okay, now for reasons that I'll just say, but I won't really go into, is that the number of decimal places that you're accurate to will double each time you do this. So we had two places of accuracy here. Okay, then we, we did one step and we doubled it to four. If we were to do one more step, we'd have eight. And if we were to do one more after that, we'd have 16 places of accuracy. And 16 places of accuracy is enough to do just about any engineering thing that you want. If you have something measured to 16 places of accuracy, that's like being able to say something like, I know the distance between this building in Los Angeles and that building in New York to within the width of like a proton. <laughs> that's good, right? It, 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 need not, it need not be more accurate than this. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so now what we want, so, so notably, this is, this is neat and cute and everything, but there's a problem, and that is that it only allows us to compute reciprocals of numbers between half and one, right? <laughs> right? Okay, that's a, that seems like it's a little bit limited in scope, <laughs> a little bit limited in scope, uh, because, um, well, what about what's the reciprocal of, say, 23.70? which is a perfectly legitimate number, but not between half and one. And we, we, we might be interested in the reciprocal of that number. So this constitutes a method to, to, compute, to compute reciprocals more or less if they happen to fall right there. But there's a lot of other plot, right? There's all of that plot. There's all of this other plot that's up here and over here. How will we, how will we make that accessible to us? Okay, so this requires another point of view. <coughs> so, <coughs> when we first started talking about this, we said we want to we want to be able to compute division. That's what we want. We want to be able to compute a numerator divided by a denominator. That's what we want. And then we said, we said, well, okay, we could, we could construe the division to be actually n multiplied by 1 over d. We could say, well, if it, if it were possible for us to compute the reciprocal of d, then we could, we could compute n over d by computing, by multiplying n with the reciprocal of d. Okay. <clears throat> so this, this, was, this was the point of view that we took. But now I'd like for you to observe something. Suppose that we have n over d. <clears throat> um, and suppose that the denominator that we want, the thing we want to reciprocate, is too big. <coughs> Suppose it's too big, like we, we really can only handle denominators that are between half and one. Suppose that the denominator is 10-ish. Too big. So, well, what if we take the denominator and multiply it by half? That'd be great, wouldn't it? If we multiplied the denominator by half, because then it wouldn't be so big and maybe we'd be able to handle it. But you can't just arbitrarily multiply the denominator by half because that would change the result. What else must you do? Multiply the top by half. So what I want you to see is that if the denominator were too big, if it were a number that would be too big for us to reciprocate with that, with that previous technique, then you could multiply the numerator and the denominator by half, both, and that wouldn't change the answer. And furthermore, Multiple, f where the machine is concerned, it's, it's, it's easy to multiply the numerator and denominator by half because what is that doing? It's doing a binary shift. It's shifting the point. So it's the same thing. This is just like in decimal when you say, well, 10.0 uh, 
95 divided by 23.70 is the same as we can move we can move the points as long as we move both points in the same direction by the same amount the result is the same we could say well I'm gonna move the point to the left in the numerator but in response what else must I do must also do it in the denominator so what I'm saying you know, in decimal, as long as you move the point the same number of places in the same direction, it doesn't change the result. And it's the same, the same is true in binary. So that's what this is saying. Well, okay. So this, this would be, we would do something like this. If we had a D that was too big. If a D was if the D we were trying to deal, deal with was too big. <clears throat> what if we were trying to compute N over D and the D was too small? Like if, if we wanted to end up dividing by, say, 0 0.3. Sorry? Double it. Double it. Yeah. All right. We could say, well, if the denominator is not big enough to be in our interval. It's a positive value, but not, but not in our interval. So it's between zero and half, but not, not including half. Then we could multiply it by two. That would make it bigger. But you can't just arbitrarily multiply the denominator by two. That would change the result. So what else must you do? Also to the numerator, right? which is to say you have to move the, the, the binary point the same amount for both numerator and denominator. You would do this. If D were too small. So let's think about that for a moment. If D was, was, was 0 0.3, that'd be too small because the smallest D we can deal with is 0 0.5. That's the smallest one we can deal with. What's twice 0 0.3? 0 0.6. Do you observe that that is simultaneously big enough but not too big? Right, because the too big would be more than one. Too big would be more than one. Okay, interesting. So now there's one other problem. Yes? Um, how do you choose between half and two? I mean, if the numbers are extremely too big, it will take you many steps to reduce every time by half, right? Okay, so I have a, I have a question for you. So you're, you asked a question, I ask a counter question. Suppose that the denominator is really big, like 4 billion. How many steps will it take? Like one half? Um, two? So, so what, I, what I mean is that suppose we were trying to divide by 4 billion, and you'd say, oh, denominator 4 billion, that's too big. So I'm going to multiply it by half, which is, a, which is now 2 billion, right? And then you look at 2 billion and say, oh, that's too big. I can't do 2 billion. So we'll, we'll multiply by half again. It would take about 32 steps. It would take about 32 steps. And why would it take around 32 steps? Right, because in the end, you're asking, the question is, is what is the logarithm? of the denominator. So that means that even if the number is quite big, hundreds of billions, trillions, the number of, the number of places you have to move the point is probably going to be less than 100 places. <laughs> if, if you have a number that, 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 has, that has the point out to 100 places, then, then you, you, have, you have other problems right, <laughs> to deal with. But yes, I agree that there's it, it possibly se possibly several tens of steps are going to be necessary to move the point. Okay, another issue we need to deal with. Yes. Then one half is acceptable. One half is acceptable. <coughs> yes. What happens if it's zero? Ah, well, so so the the. Let me ask. Let me ask it like this: What what do you do when someone asks you to divide by zero? <laughs> 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 well, 
Well, the only way you can respond is to say that this is not defined. Yeah. yeah. So this, this method is not able to define division by zero. <laughs> um, so there's, there's yet one more problem. So w what, we d what we've said, what we said is how we would handle if, <laughs> if the denominator were too big. Yeah, and we also said, what would we do if the denominator were positive but too small? And then what's the last case? What if it's negative? That is to say, what if, so far we've said, because we cut this plot into four pieces, we've said, what we'll do if we happen to be on this piece? If we happen to be on this piece, we'll make our initial guess with that line and then start iterating. If we happen to be on this side, then we'll start multiplying numerator and denominator by two. If we happen to be on this piece, we'll start multiplying and dividing, we'll start multiplying numerator and denominator by half. The last question is what will we do if we're over here? Multiply the whole result by a negative one? Believe it or not, it's the same, it's the same trick as before is that we just can't handle negative denominators. So if the denominator is negative, then the, then the negation of the denominator is positive, isn't it? So let's make it positive. But you can't just arbitrarily negate the denominator. That would change the problem. So what else must we do? Negate the numerator also. OK. So, if the denominator is positive but, but too small, or sorry, if the denominator is too big, you do this. If the denominator is positive but too small, you do this. If the denominator is negative, you do this. <laughs> once, you're, once you don't need to do any of these anymore, once none of these conditions are true, then what? Then you will be in this region and then you start. Yes? So I'm, I'm kind of confused. So if you have like a number that's like 3 halves, right? And uh -huh. or, uh, it, but it's the same as 3 halves, but it's a different numerator and denominator. You keep doubling the numerator and denominator. You keep having the numerator and the denominator. It's the same fraction, though, right? So like, how can, how can we fit that into the 1 half to 1 range? I'm just I, think it'll clear, I think it'll clear up as soon as we okay. do an example. Okay, so let's write, down, let's write down a function that performs division. Let's do it. Okay, so I guess uh, we'll call it, we don't want to call it D because we're calling the denominator D and that'd be confusing. So how about, let's call it F, I suppose. Classic. Okay. Huh? Classic. Yeah. <laughs> so we wanna, we're going to make a function F, and it takes two arguments, a numerator and a denominator. And the purpose of this function is to define what it would mean to divide in, in over D, in, in, with, with, to, to decimal places, right? Not quotient, not, not quotient and remainder. Okay. So in particular, d can't be 0 because no matter how clever we are, we're not going to be able to get around this problem. OK. <clears throat> so there's several clauses. And the first three or so are going to be more or less, what if, what if we're on the wrong region of the reciprocal function? Okay. Then we need to we need to take steps to move us closer to the right region. So my first my the first thing I want to deal with is what if what if we're over here? What 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 condition will be true that would mean that we find ourselves over here? <coughs> that d is less than zero. So in the case in the case that d is less than zero, what do we need to do, to do? Right. Algebraically, we observe that if we negate the numerator and the denominator, then that would fix it for us. 
So in this case, the answer is going to be f of negative n, negative d. So what this does is this, if we find ourselves on the left side of the plot, this reflects us to the right side. Okay. What if, so, so that, takes, that takes care of us being over here. What if we're up here? What does that mean? What, yeah, it means that the denominator is too small. It means it's positive, that's good, but, but too small if we're up here. So how will we handle that? Right, it'll be f of twice n, twice d. Okay, and what is the condition? Right, so zero less than d, less than half. Okay, good. <clears throat> the next the next way in which we could be in the in the in a region that won't won't be helpful to us is uh, is what if we're over here on this bit? Then that's saying d is too big, right? And it's kind of like the Goldilocks thing, right? My porridge is too cold, this porridge is too hot, <laughs> right? So, so how will we fix it in in such a case? Right. It'll be half in and half D. And what's the condition that, that tells us that this that's where we are? Right, D is more than one. Okay, so now, because because we're defining this recursively, this means that if we found ourselves with a denominator that's way, way, way too big, like four billion then that would mean we'd hit clause number three, which, which would make the denominator smaller. And then it, then it would be two billion, which would still be too big. And then we'd hit clause number three again. And then, and then the denominator would be one million, which is, uh, sorry, one billion, and that's still too big. And then we'd hit clause three again, and we keep hitting it over and over and over again until it gets to something like, until it gets to something like, uh, you know, 1.6. 1.6, oh, that's too big. But what's half of 1.6? 0 0.8, this one will work. We can deal with that one. Similarly, if we have some, de some denominator that, that, is a, that is a fractional number between zero and half, way too small, like 0 0.0001, too small, then we'll double it. But for that specific number that I said, it'll still be too small. But eventually we're going to get to a number like 0 0.43. That's too small. We can't deal with 0 0.43. But if you double 0, 0 0.43, what do you have? 0 0.86, which will work. We can deal with 0 0.86. Okay, so now, uh, <coughs> now we need to call a new function. So we're going to need to make a new function because it's going to be just like the Babylonian function where you give your current guess and it checks whether or not the new guess is, is, is good enough. Okay. So I guess really strictly speaking, so, so that it'll look just like the Babylonian function, we need an epsilon. So let's give it an epsilon. So we want the floating point division to within epsilon. Okay. So what do we want to call the function that actually performs that performs the iterative procedure when you're when you find yourself in the sweet spot? So we called this one f. What do you want to call the next one? G, okay, well, let's not be creative. <laughs> G, okay, so we'll call G of this numerator, this denominator, 
this epsilon and and we need to give it uh, we need to give it our estimate we need to give it an estimate for the the, the first estimate so what's the first estimate for the reciprocal of D that that crazy thing right so then for, 48 over 17 and then minus 32 over 17 D so that that's the first guess and this is this is otherwise sorry Let, let's write it out. So we have G, new function here, G, N, D, epsilon, and then we'll call C that guess. So this is the name of the, of the current guess. So the first time that we get into G, C will be that value. C will be that value. Okay. <coughs> So now we need to compute a new guess. Okay, so what's the next guess? What's the formula for the next guess? X equals. No, that's the first guess. Right. I can't remember what it was. I always derive it every time. That's what. Okay. So C. Two minus. C, D, right? Yeah. Why, uh, well, B, B is what it was on the previous formula, but I, I claim, well, in the first place, we don't have a B. So what does it need to be? It needs to be D, because D is what we're trying to reciprocate. <clears throat> okay, so, so this, is our, this is our guess. This is our current guess for 1 over d. That's our current guess for 1 over d. What is this? This is the next guess. <coughs> for 1 over d. So, so now we have two guesses for 1 over d, we've got the one, you know, when we enter the function for the first time, it'll be this one, and then we're able to compute the next one. How, what is, what is going to be our criteria to say that, okay, that, that, that one's good enough? Yes? Absolute value x minus c less than epsilon. Okay, good. So, suppose that the absolute value of x minus c is less than epsilon, which is to say that, okay, We've, we're, we're close enough, then what's the answer to the question of what is n divided by d? n times what? n times the last guess. n multiplied by x. It'll be n multiplied by x because, remember what we're doing, what we're doing here is we're imagining that n over d is really n multiplied by the reciprocal of d. And what is our, at, at this point, we've determined, uh, we've determined a sufficient guess for the reciprocal, and what's the name for our sufficient guess for the reciprocal? X. X. So we're saying n multiplied by 1 over d. Now suppose that our guess is not good enough. We've we, we've, we have, we've said that, okay, it's not good enough, then what should we do? N, D, Epsilon, and our new guess. Right, so, so this is otherwise. 
Okay. Wow, complicated. So now, admittedly, it's a bit abstract, but I think it, I think many, many issues will be made clear when we actually try and do one. So let's actually try one. But so, but before we get there, are there any questions? Okay. So let's try one. I'm going to need this marching orders there. Okay. So, for example, without using any divisions, let's let's divide let let's compute Twenty three divided by negative seventy. <laughs> so so let's do it, right? And let's do it to within let's do it to within um zero point zero one, just for sake of concreteness. Okay. <clears throat> So the name of the function that does this, the name of the function that does this is f. What are its arguments? A and specifically, it'll be 23, negative 70, and 0 0.01. OK. So now, conceptually, what side of the plot are we on? We're on the left side. But then, ignoring the concept and just looking at the, at the instructions, and if we na if we name the clauses of f, if we if we, if we number them like so, which clause are we in? We're in clause one. Okay. If the if the denominator is negative, then then what do you do? Mm -hmm. You you negate both n and d. So what are the new arguments? Mm -hmm. Zero point zero one. So conceptually speaking, what we did is we reflected to the right side. Okay. So now, conceptually speaking, on this plot, where are we? We're, we're over here, right, where the denominator is too big. So what we need to do is start moving left so that we can get in this sweet spot right here. OK. So the way that you start moving left is what? You start multiplying numerator and denominator by half. OK. <coughs> so. So 20, 20, 23 over 2 is what? Uh, 11 and a half. So 11 and a half. And then 70 over 2, that's 35. OK, now what? Still too big, right? So the first argument would be 5.75, and the second argument, 17 and a half. Uh, this should be negative, right? And then this one, 0 0.01. Okay, now what? Still too big, right? Okay. We need to go further. Negative 2.875. <laughs> now, this looks weird in decimal. It looks weird in decimal, but understand that in binary, if, if we were writing all these 
numbers in binary, we'd just be moving the point over one position. And it'd all be in zeros and ones. So the only reason why these numbers look weird is because we've made a, we've, we've made a function that's designed to work best in binary, but then we're doing it in base 10. That's the only reason why it looks weird. Okay, so 17 and a half divided by, oops, ah, this, 4.375. Did I mess it up? What happened? Oh, I, okay, now I get it, okay, okay, sorry. <clears throat> so 8.75, okay, keep going. Two point, uh, no, I've got to do that again. Okay, 2.875. So this is all, you know, I'm demonstrating for you that in principle it can be done by hand, but I hope that this also serves as an example of why we tell the machine to do it, right? Because <laughs> human beings are not so excellent at doing this, but we are somewhat excellent at making machines that can do it quite rapidly. Okay, still too big. Making progress, not there yet. Almost there. <laughs> <coughs> right, we, so, so what I want you to observe is that in your mind's eye, imagine the reciprocal plot. Okay, up, up to now, all of these steps, all of these steps, we've been, we haven't been in the sweet spot. We haven't been in that little rectangle where, where, where we said we know what to do when we get here. Right now we're edging up, we're edging up to that rectangle. Finally, all right. <laughs> Why? What do I mean by that? We finally made it to that rectangle. So the way that you can tell that we made it to that rectangle is that the f that the denominator argument, the thing we want to reciprocate, is now between half and one. So now, in a sense, all of this was of the same style, but now we switch. Now, the the function is not going to be f. Now it's going to be what? Now it's going to be G. Now it's going to be G with those same arguments. G of negative 0 0.1796875. 0 0.5468.75. 0 0.01. 
Uh, however, G requires four arguments. So what is the first argument? What, what is, and the, the fourth argument is, the ini in the first place, the initial guess for the reciprocal. So, so conceptually, how are we constructing the initial guess? With that line. Our first guess is, is, is coming from that line. So now we need to calculate the 48. Now we need to calculate that right there for, for this D right there. OK. OK, so there's D. So, according to my calculator, <laughs> the initial guess is 0 0.323 uh, 529412. So now, just as a matter of just sanity, right, so that we don't do a whole bunch of work and realize that we made some error, I'm going to real quick, I'm going to real quick actually divide, I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to do 1 over 70. No, I'm going to do, no, I'm going to do, uh, what am I, what do I need to do? i got to think about this for just a second. What is it that I want, that I want to do? Uh, I want to do 1 over this. I want to do 1 over this and see if I get something close to that. Because this is supposed to be our first guess for the reciprocal of that. Okay. 1 over 0 0.546875. Wait a minute, something's not right. Hold on, some, some my, I gotta, I gotta check. Something's not right. It, it, it might be that, that what's written is correct, but that my brain is wrong. Okay, so I just need to. I don't want to write a whole bunch of stuff and then say no. Let's <laughs> go fix all of that. Thirty-two over seventeen. Uh oh. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so did I make a... No, so yeah, so that's over 17. It's always good to check a little bit. Ah, okay. So then I, I, I mistyped this. I, 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 I fumbled the calculator. But it's good. I noticed, right? I noticed that something was off. So our, our initial guess should be close to the reciprocal of this, but it's not, as I have it written. So let's fix that. So, so typing it carefully into the calculator again, one point seven nine uh, four one one seven six four seven. So now this this should be close to the reciprocal of that. Let's check that. So one over oops one over zero point five four six eight seven five. How did you get the Uh well I think I I think instead of doing 32 over 17, I did 32 over 7. It's, it's close to the true answer? That's just a coincidence. That's a fumble. That, that, that's mistaking into the, into the, into the end zone. <laughs> so, so this is our initial guess. That's the real, that's the real answer. So do you see that 1.79 is close-ish close to, to, to 1.828? Okay.
<clears throat> so now we're finally in G. So the first thing we need to do is calculate our x. We need to calculate an x. So what is, what is C? Let's name all of these. This one is N, this one is D, this one is Epsilon, and this one is C. So we need to calculate x. Uh, so x is that formula right there. So typing that into the machine. Okay. And then D is that. So the next the next guess is 1.827922253. Okay. So that's x right here. So what are we supposed to do now? Yeah, let's compute the difference between c and x. So the absolute value of the difference between c and x is, well, you can see that it's about 0 0.03 something something something. So that's too big. That's too big. Why is that too big? Because it's not less than our epsilon. So that means that we're going to continue. Okay, so then that means that we'll continue with all of the first three arguments will be the same, and what will be the new fourth argument? <coughs> that value right there. So negative 0 0.1796875 is the first. 0 0.546875 is the second. Epsilon is the same. And the new first argument is 1.827922253. OK. Now what? <laughs> Make a new x, right? So this, this is now n, d, epsilon, and c. And we'll make a new x according to the formula right there. So I'll do that. <coughs> okay, doing that, I get 1.82857111918. Okay, so now we have a new x. So what are we supposed to do now? Compute the difference of these two, right? The absolute value of the difference of the present guess and the next guess. So the absolute value of the difference would be, well, I can see that they both start with 182. They both start with 182. And then that one is 8, and that one is 7. Uh, so at any rate, I know that it's less, I know that the, that the absolute value of the difference is less than our epsilon. So 0, 0.00, 0, and then, you know, whatever it is. I guess I'll type it in here. So 1.828571198 minus 1.828, wait, no, 1.82792253. Oh. Right. Right. Exactly. So we had we had one we had that one zero right there, so we should have two zeros here. But that that I only I only said that right. I didn't. 
I didn't prove it. I promise you it's true. But what does that mean in the world of math? <laughs> Okay, so 0 0.000, in fact, 0, uh, 6, 4, 8, 6, 6, 8. So do you observe that this is less than our epsilon? Yes. Yay. So what does that mean? That means that we're in this clause, right? So that means that we are able to produce our answer now. So the answer is equal to n multiplied by x. OK, so that n, negative 0 0.1796875 multiplied by that x, no, this x, 1.828. 571198. Okay, so let's type that. So, so we get that number right there. Let me copy that down. Negative 0 0.32857138. So now, how do we confirm or deny that all of this very boring arithmetic actually did, did what we want. Let's just type that in, right? If the universe is just <laughs> and fair, then when I type that in to the calculator, it's, it's just got to be close to that, right? Let's see. Oh, boy. <laughs> Moment of truth right here. Okay. So... So that's what we were trying to do. Blammo, look at that. <laughs> yeah. We did division. Look at how good it is. One, that's, that's where it is first different. That says 387. This one says 429. This is accurate enough to measure your height to within like the width of a DNA molecule. Okay. Close. <laughs> Very close. <laughs> okay, you could order from Amazon from, with that. <laughs> and what I want you to observe about this is that we divided in over D, and we only used add, subtract, and multiply. No divisions. And the thing is, is that if you were to look carefully into this machine, when, it, when, when, I, when you type this, when you, when you say, do that calculator, and you do it, and in the blink of an eye it does it, there's nothing magical happening inside of there. There's no fairy dust that it sprinkles on the arguments and it <coughs> produces the answer. What is it doing? Exactly that. It's doing exactly this. This is what it's doing. Except, it, except it's able to do this extremely rapidly. Okay, unlike us. But, but, but also unlike us, this thing can't make one of us. But we can make one of it. <laughs> right? So if you were to look closely at this machine with a microscope, you, at, at the actual silicon, then you'd see a bunch of little, little bitty wires. You'd, you'd need a microscope because they're very small. And you would see a little binary machine that, that really is doing exactly this, shifting the, shifting the sign from one, from one argument to the other as necessary, shifting the, the binary place, left or right, as necessary, performing this, uh, this exact initial guess into the, Newton, into the newton raphson division, and then performing exact, for this machine exactly three iterations. It doesn't, it doesn't do epsilon. It doesn't have an epsilon because this initial guess gets you within, uh, always within, I think, one place or two places of the, of the true answer. And uh, binary places, not necessarily, not necessarily decimal places. And then as a result, with exactly three shifts, with, with, sorry, with exactly three iterations, it's able to get you all the digits of accuracy that are available to this calculator. 
So that, this is what the calculator does. It does it exactly three times. Your, the, the machines in the lab do it exactly four times because they, they're able to have more, uh, more, more, decimal, more binary digits of accuracy. Yes? If we rewrote this to use decimal instead of binary, how quickly would we be able to calculate it? I'm not sure I understand your question. So instead of multiplying or dividing by 2, we multiply or divide by 10, and we calculate the regression line for an interval from 1 to 0.1. Well, you'd want to do it for something like, for, for something like one tenth to one. Mm -hmm. So if you were in base eight, you'd want to do it from base from one over eight to one. But be, and because we're in base two, we're doing it from one over two to mm -hmm. one. And well, I mean, I I can only speculate. There aren't any base ten computers. There's only base two computers that I'm aware of. And so how quickly would we personally be? Well, a little, a little faster, a little faster because uh, you see how these numbers are getting all weird, like 5.75 and then that and then that and then that. The only reason why the numbers look weird is because we're dividing by 2. If we were dividing by 10, then the point would just be shifting. But I I in the end, I think it would be easier if we all just gave up base 10 and just we all did base 2. I think this would be, <laughs> this, this would be easier from a technical point of view, impossible from a political, so socio-political <laughs> point of view, right? How could we get everyone to count in base two? <laughs> okay, so the last thing I want to leave you with. Is the following. So it's a, I'm going to introduce a game. So the game is called, I'm thinking of a natural number. <laughs> I'm thinking of a natural number, and your job is to guess. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> you, you got me. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I'm thinking of a natural number, and you're supposed to come to the, get, come to the correct answer using as few guesses as possible. And I, I respond to your guess with, either, with, with exactly one of three responses. Your guess is too small, your guess is too big, or you have guessed correctly. So I give you exactly one of these three responses. And, and even though, yes, probably when, when, I do a, when I do an example, I probably will pick 2370. <laughs> uh, you have to, in principle, know that I could pick any number. Even, even a very, very big number. So here's the, fir the first element of the strategy for playing this game is you've got to figure out where approximately is this number. Okay? So, so the, way that this, the way that you do this is we'll again do, do more or less take advantage of binary. And we'll say, okay, let's always guess one first. All right? So... So suppose that, suppose that I guess, that you guess one, and I say, that's too big. Then, then you know your answer. What's the answer? Zero. Because that's the only natural smaller than one. Suppose you guess one, and I say, you have it. Then what's the answer? One. One, okay. Suppose that, suppose that you guess one, and I say, that's not big enough. Then what should be your next guess? Two. Two. Okay, suppose I say that's not big enough. Four. Then four. And suppose I say that's not big enough. Eight. Eight. And you keep doubling this. You keep doubling your guess because eventually I'm going to say, now that's too big. Now you've established two things. So suppose that, suppose that, um, that you go along guessing these powers of two. And I say that, and you come to 256 and I say, oh, that's too big then you would have already previously guessed 128 and I would have already previously said that's too small. So as a result of me responding to you that 256 is too big, you now know the only possibilities. What are the only possibilities? What's the smallest possible one? No, 128, 129. It couldn't be 128 because I already told you that it, it wasn't. And then, what's, so the smallest possible answer is 129. 
What's the largest? 255. 255. So suppose that now you know this. What should you guess? The, guess the point in the middle. Because if you guess the, the point in the middle, if you're right, then that's it. If it's too big, then you know the new upper bound, and you've eliminated half of all the, all the possibilities. Okay, so suppose that the, the midpoint of 129 and 255 is, man, I have no idea. Let's just say it's 190. <laughs> okay, then if it's 190 and I say that's too big, then you've eliminated half of the possibilities. And now you do this exactly again until there's only one possibility remaining, eliminating half of the possibilities each time. Okay, so we'll talk about this next time. Have a nice uh, Thursday.